Hey, so welcome back to the next part of my tutorial on how to easily save figures in R. Uh, now I'm going to take the figure that we worked with last time to the next level. So I'm going to improve its composition, what it looks like, make some adjustments to what type of plot it actually is to make it a little more appropriate for the data that we're trying to visualize, uh, and really just give you a complete walkthrough to kind of what my thought process is as I go through with creating a visualization in R. If you haven't seen my previous video and part one in this little series that I have, then I suggest checking that out. It's where I go over creating the initial plot that we're going to be working with in this video that we're gonna be expanding on, and also where I introduce ggsave. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. There'll be a link in this video and then down below in the description. If you have seen it, then fantastic. Uh, excited to have you here. Thanks for watching and let's jump in. But now I wanna like take this one step further and let's make this plot quite a bit nicer just so that you can see kind of what a polished product might look like together with this GG save feature that we have. So for that, we're going to, I'm gonna just put a little separator here so that we know that we're starting something a little new. And for this section, I'm gonna load the tidyverse uh, set of packages, which includes dplyr. Uh, you could just learn load I think we could just load dplyr instead of tidyverse. I always like to load tidyverse because it also loads ggplot and, and other uh, useful packages, but let's just try with dplyr. And again, you can install it uh, using install.packages if you don't already have dplyr installed. It's a really powerful tool. If you know about Python uh, already and you're just learning R now, dplyr is kind of like the equivalent of pandas in, in Python. Uh, a lot of useful tools for working with data frames and data manipulation. Let's, let's adjust a few more plot parameters to make the plot look really good. So we're still gonna be working with the same data and we'll say ggplot, we'll copy this whole thing over. So let's say, let's actually make it a, so if we look at the plots again, this looks like it would look better as a box plot because you have all these points in these age categories. And so grouping all of these points into a block box plot each seems to make a little more sense. So let's, use, instead of geom point, let's do geom box plot. Let's run this first just to see what that looks like. Ah, uh, yes. The problem is that age, it, it's just kind of lumping everything together because it isn't actually separate categories the way we'd want it to be. So before this, let's modify the pine data a little bit. Let's say, let's do pine data. So we're taking this raw loblolly data. I'm gonna add a pipe. So piping is also another useful, which actually is not part of the dplyr library. So let's try this just to see what happens. Um, maybe it is part of the dplyr library, let's see. It might, a bunch of changes have happened recently where they've added uh, when you load uh, dplyr, or it's possible that I had already loaded tidyverse. Just to be sure, so actually this is a really good exercise. Something that sometimes happens is you'll write code, you delete some things, then you run it again, it's still working, and then you reopen RStudio and you run the code and it doesn't work anymore. And that's because you ran something in the past that you delete it, since deleted, but it's still in the environment. Uh, so for example, you loaded a certain package. And I think the reason this pipe is working is, or that I didn't get an error that tells me it doesn't know what this means. It, I got a different kind of error here, but the fact that I didn't get an error that tells me this, that, that says this it doesn't know what this means, suggests that perhaps I had loaded tidyverse previously and that when I was playing around in this script and then removed it, to run dplyr instead. Whenever you're working with R code, and, and uh, Hadley Wickham is a big proponent of this, you can basically restart your R session. And there's some other fancy ways of doing it, but let's just restart R by just clicking here. And this resets the environment, it resets the plotting area, it says restarting R session right here. So now we're gonna have to rerun a few things. So we're gonna have to rerun ggplot2. Let's put this all down here so that all the code is nice and together. We're gonna rerun the Loblolly data to get that. Okay, so let's run dplyr to load that. Let's load ggplot2. Let's load the Loblolly data set. And now let's 
see if the pipes work. So let's actually finish this. So what I was gonna say here was let's use mutate to change age to a factor. So that will allow us to have like these different box plots based on these different age groupings. So now if we run this, oh, look at that, it worked. Okay, so this is telling me that there's been some recent changes in dplyr perhaps that now load, or in ggplot2 perhaps, that load this, which used to be part of the magriter um, package, which isn't loaded, and yet somehow it knows. Anyway, if anyone knows the answer to this, please comment down below. Curious to know why. It might be something with the new version of dplyr. Anyway, so this worked, and now if we take a look at the pine data, we can actually click on this little arrow here to see what these different, what the different data types here. So height is still numeric, but now age is a factor with six levels. So if we just run pine data age, these are the values, and then here we have levels, three, five, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Excellent. Okay, so now if we run this box plot, now it should separate age into the separate boxes. And let's see if this worked. And it did. There we go. So we have a separate box plot for each of these different ages. Excellent. Now, something else is, some of you might know that I have this big pet peeve against the default theme of ggplot. It's actually what kept me from going into ggplot2 for a really long time. A lot of people were saying, oh, you can make really beautiful plots with ggplot, but I always thought that the default looked kind of ugly. It just kind of felt like it was this unnecessary gray area, it wasn't simple and, and intuitive to look at. Some people love it offhand. It's just my personal preference. I really didn't like the way this looked. So you might use a theme such as theme classic which will look much more like the base R theme. There you have it, a little easier to kind of see the simplicity of the figure. Some people might prefer the grid in this case because it does easily, because of the kind of far distance between everything, it might be important to be able to easily quickly match up what these ages and heights actually are on the two different axes. So to adjust that, let's actually bring in a, a modified theme that I like to use. So here is, I'll just copy and paste it here. I'll add it to the comments below so you can copy and paste it and use it as well. So I call this theme, theme frame, because it adjusts the, the sizing of the fonts, the, the, the margins around the figure. It really overall creates this much more appealing proportion and composition to the figures. And what's cool about ggplot2 is that you can create this theme, these theme settings, save it, and then apply it to any plot that you want to apply it to. So there's a lot of pre-built themes, um, but this one I like to use on top of any other theme that I'm using because it really only just has to do with adjusting the proportions and, and margins of everything. So I call it theme frame because it kind of frames out the plot. We've got the plot margin, which adds some margins around the entire plot. Uh, the axis text on the x-axis sets it to size 11. On the y-axis, size 11. But then the label for each for each margin is uh, axis.title. So this sets it to a little bit bigger and then adds some margins around that. And then finally, the plot title, which in this case, we don't have a plot title, but you can also, I also set the size of that. So this I might run, you know, sort of along with when I load my libraries, kind of one of the first things I'll run, run that. And then I will just add this here right after theme classic. I'll just do a plus. And because it's my own theme that I created, I don't actually need, it's not actually a function. So I'm not gonna add those parentheses there. And let's see what this looks like now. There we go. So it's not a huge change. It really just changes the, again, the margins and the proportions of the text sizes a bit to make it compositionally a little bit more appealing, uh, much, much, much closer to a publication ready figure. So just to flip between these two so you can see again, this is what it looks like before. Text is really small, not really a lot of breathing room around the margins. Now it's a little bit more compositionally sound. 
Uh, and of course, you can play around with these numbers to, to adjust it to your liking however you want or, or add other theme elements here that you want to modify and adjust. Create your whole entire amazing theme from scratch. Do whatever you want. <laughs> this is just uh, kind of a, a proof of concept here to show you how you can make a nice looking figure and then the magic sauce, save it with GG save. So let's go on and let's actually, let's do a, a few more things here. So I'm gonna actually, in this case, I think I'm gonna actually remove, there's a few other adjustments I wanna do. Okay, so I'm gonna remove theme classic because I think in this case, the grid is actually a little bit better. Yeah, that does look a little bit nicer because the grid does help you kind of orient with respect to height and age. But I want to add, uh, to, to adjust these axes a little bit more. So I'm going to say scale, y continuous so scale y continuous is one way to adjust anything on the y-axis that that forms a continuous set of values so in this case since there are all they are all continuous they're not categorical so we're going to say scale y continuous breaks equals sequence we're going to go from 0 to 100 by tens so here we're going by 20s, it kind of starts around 10 and goes to about 60, 70 or so. Uh, let's just go from zero to 100 by 10. So that's sequence. If we just run this function, just as a quick reminder, that just creates the sequence of values that go from zero to 100 by 10. And so instead of writing out all these numbers, I'm just using this function and, and breaks tells us where we want the marker labels for the Y axis. So we run this and see now we have this nicer set of values. Uh, and note, because we're just saying create these breaks between zero and 100, ggplot is smart and it still only shows us, you know, kind of the relevant area uh, that encompasses our data and doesn't actually go from zero to 100 per se. And then let's add some actual meaningful labels instead of just height and age, let's add the units in as well. So we say labs, x equals tree age in years and then y equals height in feet great so i think that's and don't forget the plus here make sure it adds all the different elements together let's run this excellent okay now Here's the thing, what I was saying before at the very beginning was that you could save this by going save as image, but the problem is, look, if I do this um, and or do that and then go to export save as PDF, it will save it exactly in the proportion that we're looking at right here, which is not what we want. Uh, we want something consistent regardless of how our studio is set up, how big this window is set up. We want to save a PDF the same size each time we run it. The other thing I always say, and I keep mentioning PDF, is that PDF is the best way to save your figures in R because it preserves all of the resolution. So they're essentially, they've got essentially an infinite resolution, meaning that it's basically a vectorized image. So the more you zoom in on it, you'll still see the same lines. It won't become pixelated. So if you save it as a PDF, uh, a lot of times when you submit publications, they'll want the image either as a really high resolution TIFF or a PDF because uh, as a PDF, it, it retains all of its resolution. So general good rule of thumb, always save as a PDF, but if you do this, it'll only save it in the proportion or in the aspect ratio that you see here or and also the size that you see here so if you make it really big see this kind of looks again proportionally not that great with the numbers being very small so let's use gg save so the way that gg save works is it saves the last image that you plotted uh, you don't actually add it in as with a plus to the gg plot sequence although that would be kind of cool it just saves the last figure that you created. So let's save this now as my pine plot. Let's save it as a four by six was in inches was a good proportion, good size to save this. Not PDF. So width equals four height equals six. As you're playing around with this, 
Another way to actually take advantage of both this little clicking method and saving it as ggsave is the first time you ever save it, you might want to kind of play around and see what size is best. You might have no idea and it takes a while to save it and then you go and open it and then you try again and it, you have to keep going back and forth. Instead, you can just go to here, save as image, even though you're not gonna actually save it as this image. And you can play around with what looks really good. So in this case, let's do something like, I don't know, something like that is what looked good. Here it has the size in points or pixels rather than in inches. But either way, this is kind of how I figured out the ratio that made the most sense. You can update, you can also edit these values here and then update the preview. Uh, I'm not gonna actually save it. I'm just gonna click cancel. Um, but I think, let's see, let's see if we can do this with PDF too. Ah, yeah, okay, so with PDF, here we do have it in inches. So what we can do is say four by six and we want it in portrait. So I played around with these different sizes until I found this one looked good. And I'm not gonna click save, I'm just gonna click preview. I'm gonna pull this in. This is kind of big, a little smaller. So that proportion looked good. And the reason I made it a lot taller is this tiny little box plot here was all scrunched up and you couldn't really see much of it. So I figured it seemed more valuable to have this be stretched upright in a portrait like that. So yeah, so that, that sizing looked about right. Again, I'm not gonna save it this way, even though in this case it would create the same thing. Uh, but I'm again, for reproducibility, for ease, for the fact that you can have this one line of code right in here that does it all for you. I'm just gonna leave it like that and say units equals inches. And let's just run this one more time to make sure that that's the last figure we ran and then save it. Okay, now let's go to files. My pine plot four by six, pull it in here. Let's make it a little bit smaller so we can see it on the screen. And there it is. So that's it. If you enjoyed this video, uh, be sure to like it. Uh, comment down below if you have any questions or, or share the figures that you were able to create and save with ggsave. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. Uh, I'm really excited to continue producing these videos and the more people that subscribe and show interest, the more I'm gonna be doing that. So really appreciate your support. If you like this and want to learn more, I've got both free and paid resources on my website at rfreecology.com where you can enroll in my Basics of R Free Ecologists course, which is a complete essentials course that takes you by the hand from the very beginning on how to install R and R Studio all the way through data visualization and being able to really manipulate and wrangle your data like a professional in R. So I go through through basically all the essentials that you need to get a solid foundation in working with R as an ecologist. But then I also have my intro to data visualization with R for ecologists, which is aimed at someone that maybe already knows the very basics of R, but wants to take their data visualization skills to the next level. With that said, the links are here in this video. There's gonna be links down below if you wanna check out my courses or if you wanna check out my blog or other YouTube videos. Uh, there's a lot of information and I try to make it as accessible as possible to everyone. So again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.